Okay, now that we're finished with autocorrelated errors, by the way, most often termed serial correlation, we can check out the next assumption we make in order to do linear regression analysis. And you might remember the complicated term. It was called homo, homo, scadasticity. Homo scadasticity. And homo scadasticity basically means that your errors variance should roughly be constant. Our assumptions will never be fulfilled by 100% as much as we are never able to explain something up to 100%. So the various variance of your errors should roughly be constant. But what does that actually mean, the variance of your errors must be constant? Mm, you might remember from our video on variance that the variance measures how far our numbers are spread out. So in other words, your errors should be spread out evenly as you go along the regression line. Well, it should look like this. So you draw a plot and you get a regression line and your errors should be of course randomly scattered around the regression line, but also the variance should stay the same. Okay, so it should look like this because as you can see, the variance is constant over time. Okay, um, since there is homoscedasticity, there should also be what we call heteroscedasticity. Okay, heteroscedasticity. So Heteroscedasticity is the counterpart of homoscedasticity. And heteroscedasticity looks like this. So again, you draw a plot, you get a regression line, but now, the uh, again, the errors are spread out randomly around the regression line, but the variance increases over time. So it looks something like this. Well, as you can see, there is a difference. If you look at the first plot, so if you look at the first plot with um, heteroscedastistic errors, you can see that the variance of our errors is constant as we go along the regression line. If you take a look at the second plot, you can see that our variance increases as we go along the regression line. So the variance increases as we go along the regression line. Now, it could also, so heteroscedasticity could also look like this, for example. Then you get your regression line, and your errors might look something like this. So again, your errors, or the variance of your errors, is not constant over time, but it decreases over time. So heteroscedasticity is something you could encounter, especially if you're working with cross-sectional data. A great example would be the following regression. So imagine you are a business historian and you are inquiring into the customers of a bank in Berlin before the year 1929. And you like to know who saves how much of his income. So um, you, reg you, you regress savings ratio on income. So you get your plot over here and your independent variable would be disposable income and you're interested in savings ratio. Okay, how much of the income is um, being put into a savings account, for example. Okay, now what would be the rational behind this? Well, economic theory tells us that if people earn more money, they will save a greater portion of it. So our regression line should look like this. So our regression line should look like this. As disposable income increases, the saving ratio should increase as well. And um, now let's, let's put on our errors, okay? So it might look something like this. Okay, now this is this is the regression, and um, this is the true regression line. So our findings would make perfect sense. 
But this isn't a whole story. Eco econometric studies also tell us that the variance of the savings ratio between individuals increase the more they earn. So the variance increases over time. Um, so as you can see, our rational is confirmed. The more people earn, the more they will save. Poor people in general, so poor people are over here with, with a low um, disposable, with, with not much disposable income right here. Um, poor people in general save less of their income than rich people do. But on the other hand, the variance of the savings ratio increases as income grows. So if you go along the regression line, you'll see that the variance of the errors uh, uh, grows over time. Um, the behavior of people starts to differ as soon as they ma mo make more money. And this is actually the classical example where researchers encounter heteroscedasticity. Well, not quite classical since I changed it a bit to make it a problem for economic historians. So what is the consequence of doing a regression when heteroscedasticity is present? So what would be the consequence if you would run a regression, uh, OLS, um, a, a nor a j just ordinary least squares on uh, this regression over here with, uh, with heteroscedasticity in the error term? So what would be the um, consequence of this? Well, um, as I've already said, the regression line is giving us the right answer. So as income grows, the savings ratio increases. So it gives us the right answer. Therefore, th there is no bias in there. But because your regression treats every single observation the same, it'll give you wrong standard errors and therefore wrong confidence intervals. But luckily, today with statistical software such as R, we can estimate the variance and calculate heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. Um, also, you might remember that logs are our friends, so try take the logarithm of the problematic variable and see if it reduces or eliminates the heteroscedasticity. But still we need to be able to detect whether there is heteroscedasticity or not. And it might not be that obvious as in our example. So if you take a look at the plot over here, it's pretty obvious that there is heteroscedasticity, but it might be not that obvious. So again, we need a formal test in order to check for this. And a common test to check for heteroscedasticity is the so-called Broich, Broich Pagan test. So Broich Pagan test. Again, we meet Mr. Broish. Um, we have to thank him for all these great statistical tests. And of course, uh, credit goes to his partners, such as Pagan. And this test will give you back a p-value. So again, this test will give you a p-value. So you can decide whether there is heteroscedasticity or not. If the p-value is small enough to reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity, you should compute robust standard errors. Um, there's also another test for heteroscedasticity called the white test. So the white test, white test. And the problem, because the problem with the Broish Pagan test is that it doesn't really work perfectly as the error's variance increases non-linear. So the Broish Pagan test doesn't really work if your um, variance increases in a non-linear uh, fashion. Um, so then you will have problems. Um, and for that reason, the white test tests for more than just linear heteroscedasticity. Well, basically both tests run a regression of your squared errors on your regresses. The white test, on the other hand, uses much more regresses than the Broish pagan test. So it uses more degrees of freedom and hence it makes it more difficult to calculate the test statistics. Therefore, I would advise you to use both tests when you're checking for heteroscedasticity in your errors. You want to use the Broish Pagan test to check whether there is linear um, non constant variance in your error term, and you want to use the white test to check whether there might be non linear um, um, variance in your errors.